Hello there, and thanks for joining me. I'm Corel Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Wacom Cintiq 27 QHD Touch. So first, let's give a quick overview of the Cintiq 27. It is 27 inches diagonally, so it is the biggest Cintiq available. It has this nice edge-to-edge -edge glass design, which means that there's no weird edge that comes up abruptly when you're painting off of your screen here. It's a quad HD screen, also known as 1440p, which means that you can make very fine little lines and marks like this. I like that a lot. The pen is pressure sensitive, and it has 2048 levels of pen pressure, so you can make a wide range of thick to thin lines very easily like so. So I can do thick lines and I can taper them off and do very thin patching and shading. You'll see that there's this neat little express key remote over here. It's magnetic. It sticks to your tablet. So you can mount it and it'll stay put. And it has all these different buttons on it. You could use these buttons to do just about anything like resize your brush, zoom in and out of your canvas. You could set it up to invoke your color picker or shift alt control different modifiers and keyboard shortcuts very handy and it's nice that the buttons aren't built into the screen like in previous models of the Cintiq this tablet will work with both Windows and Mac you do need a desktop computer to connect it to it can connect through a number of ways I'm connecting it through DisplayPort right now but you could also connect it through HDMI, DVI, VGA and Mini DisplayPort as well and the good thing about this is it comes with all of the cables and adapters that you need to get this working on just about any computer. Now by default it comes with these little legs that come out so you can either lay this flat or you can have it slightly at an angle. You can get an optional stand or you can get an Ergotron arm. I have mine on an Ergotron arm so I can lift it up and it'll float in the air and come over to the side here and you can see there's a little arm holding it. As far as the weight goes, it's not very heavy. It's just under 20 pounds without the stand. If you add the Wacom stand to it, that makes it 55.1 pounds. I'm using the Ergotron arm, and so that doesn't really necessarily add weight to it because it's mounted to the desk. It's really just clamped on to the desk, and then the arm is holding it from behind. And the good thing about this being under 20 pounds, it's also VESA compatible, which is a standard for mounting displays like monitors and TVs. So you can mount this to just about any kind of monitor arm or TV stand. I've seen these things mounted all kinds of different ways. Now one really important thing to mention is that the VESA adapter on the back of this is actually like this. It's rectangular, so it's 200 by 100 millimeters, whereas the standard is square 100 by 100. So I did have to get a bracket for this. I found one for pretty cheap on Amazon, and that basically converted it from the square to the rectangle very easily using these little bracket things that you attach to it and just screw in, and that works really well for holding it. Now as far as the quality of the screen, it is an AHVA LCD proprietary IPS screen, which means that if you look at it from different angles, it still looks the same. It doesn't get all warped and distorted when you're looking at it at an angle. It has a really good contrast ratio and brightness. It's very bright, so it's easy to see what I'm working on. The color gamut is 97% of the Adobe RGB color gamut, which means that it's very, very accurate color. You can get a color calibrator for it if you want, but I find that out of the box, the color is pretty accurate. Now, it's important to mention, to get the full Quad HD resolution out of the screen, your computer needs to support DisplayPort. It may work with HDMI, but it depends on the computer. So just keep that in mind. If you connect this through DVI to your computer, you're only going to get 1920 HD resolution, which is a little bit lower. Now this tablet does support multi-touch. So as you can see, I can zoom and pan and rotate my page very easily using my fingers. The touch can be a little touchy when you're using multi-touch. A lot of the times it's very responsive and it works perfectly, but occasionally it may kind of glitch out a little bit and it might be hard to use. So if it is kind of a nuisance and you find you're not really using it very much, you can very easily and quickly turn it off using this little button here. It's a little touch button. It's not actually like a button that you have to press, but you just touch it. There's also a button to invoke your keyboard on screen. 
if you want to pop your little keyboard up here. Right now I have it set to writing so I could, for example, write a word down there and that would try to type it in. Or I can switch to an actual keyboard and if I want to type like so, there's no need to really have a physical keyboard. If you have all these express keys, you don't really need to pull this keyboard up to do keyboard commands. Let's talk a little more about the pen. The pen has an eraser, so I can flip it over and just erase naturally. The eraser is pressure sensitive as well. The pen also supports pen tilt, so I can draw with the tip of the pencil, or I can draw with the side of the pencil, and you can see that I can get a different mark depending on the angle of my pen. The pen also has two buttons on the side that I can use for different commands. For example, I could resize my brush, or I could invoke right-click to get some different menus. What's nice about these Wacom pens is they are cordless and they are battery-free, so they do not require batteries or charging. You can just use the pen without having to charge it. There's a little plastic nib on the end here, which will eventually wear down, but fortunately it does come with a whole bunch of replacement nibs. They're in the little pen holder here, which as you can see, has quite a few nibs. There's some standard plastic ones and there's also some felt ones if you prefer kind of a marker felt feel while you're drawing. Now that gives you a little more friction while you're drawing, which is nice. And on the topic of friction, friction is something that's very natural when you're drawing. The paper kind of resists your pencil and so there's tablets out there that have very slick screens and I feel like those don't feel very natural to draw on. They're way too slick. You need a little bit of friction. And the good thing about these Wacom tablets is that even though they have a, a glass screen, the screen still has a little bit of friction to it. So when you draw on it, you kind of hear that swooshy paper sound and it kind of resists your pen. It doesn't do it a whole lot. It's not gonna like scratch your pen or anything like that, but it's just a little bit of natural resistance and it feels very smooth. It's also very smooth against your hand. I'm gonna turn my touch off here real quick. And as you're gliding your hand across the tablet, it also doesn't stick to your hand. It's very smooth. The screen is also diffused. You can see there's a light kind of over here on the side. And that light isn't super sharp when it's reflecting off of the screen. Neither is my reflection here of myself in the recording. It's diffused, so it's a little bit softer and a little bit more broken up. I can illustrate that here with this brush. I'll kind of diffuse this and you can see it's softened, it's broken up, and that's what it does to the reflections. So a very nice screen for that reason. Another great feature about this, if we look over here on the side, is there's a place to plug in some USB items here. So I have my little dongle for my wireless mouse and keyboard. There's also another USB port here on the side. So there's two on this side. If we come over here to the other side, there are two right here on this side. And these are all USB 3.0 ports, so they are very fast as far as the connection. You can use them for things like, for example, if you wanted to plug in a USB stick or you wanted to charge your electronic cigarette or you wanted to take some photos or videos off of your memory card from your camera. It's very handy to have all these ports here. You could also plug in a webcam if you wanted to and set it up on the screen. And there's a little power button up here if you want to turn it on and off. In the back, there's basically just a place to mount it and a place to attach the cables. So as far as the adapters that it comes with, it comes with a DisplayPort cable, an HDMI cable, a USB 3.0 cable, a micro USB cable for the Express Key remote, which requires charging. So that would be this cable here. And I could just stick it in there, plug it in and charge it. And then it automatically powers off if you don't use it for a while. So on the bottom, there's a little light that shows you the status of it. You can turn it on here, and if I wanted to hit this button and do some undos, I can do that because I have this button set to undo. I have the other button across from it set to redo. I can also rotate this little wheel with my thumb and I can zoom in and out. I can do all kinds of things with this Express Key Remote. It's very handy. Now, one thing I will mention about this Express Key Remote, I've noticed that over time it starts to kind of creep down and slide down like a slug. And this could be, for one, that I'm keeping my Cintiq kind of vertical, so it could just be gravity. Two, it could just be that I have like greasy hands or something and maybe I'm getting a bunch of oil from my skin right here and that's kind of causing it to slide a little bit more. So, on the note of greasy hands and smudges and things like that, it also comes with this handy little cloth which you can use to wipe down your screen. And you can just wipe down that area there. 
wherever the remote sits. Maybe wipe down the back of the remote and it'll stick a little bit better there. You can use it to clean your screen. Probably best that you turn touch off at this point while you're cleaning your screen. That gets rid of all of the oil from your skin and all of your fingerprints and it keeps your screen nice and clean. Now when I first got this, when I was drawing, with, drawing on it with my pen, I did notice that it was kind of, felt like it was kind of sticky or something. I don't really know how to describe it, but I'm going to assume that's from the manufacturing process and there's probably some gunk on the screen because it did have film over it. So I just made sure to wipe it down really good before I used it for the first time. I just really thoroughly cleaned the whole screen and that kind of broke it in and now it's nice and smooth. And I just clean it periodically. I keep the little wipe here next to my computer. So now I want to talk a little bit about how this compares to my previous Cintiq. The previous Cintiq I used for about three years and it was the Cintiq 24 HD. It was the non-touch version. So this is my first time having touch on a screen this big. The Cintiq 24 obviously had a 24 inch screen which was smaller. It was also 1920 by 1080 resolution so it was less detailed but still a pretty decent picture. I really only notice the difference in the resolution when I'm doing very, very fine lines. Those show up a lot crisper on this screen. So, uh, so do little details like all these little speckles here that you can see. Another noticeable difference is that the edge of the screen here is edge to edge glass. So there's no abrupt edge up here. Like when you go off of the screen, off of the active part of the screen, it's just the same smooth glass all the way to the edge. There's no hard piece of plastic here like there was on the Cintiq 24. So when you get to the edge of the screen, if you were doing big gestures, you'd kind of hit that edge and you'd feel it with your pen. I feel like the 24 was a bit heavier as well, but that could just be because I had it attached to the Cintiq stand rather than the Ergotron arm. I definitely recommend that if you're going to choose between the stand or the Ergotron arm, depending on your desk situation, the Ergotron is a little more affordable and it's more versatile because you can get this thing in a number of positions. Like for instance, I can lift this up here and I can rotate it in a number of ways. If I wanted it to be vertical like this, or if I want to stand and draw, I can do that. Or I can lay it back down, or I can prop it up on my desk like so. And then I can sit down at my desk and I can work on it like this. I want to prop it back up. It's very fluid and very smooth and very easy to move. Another noticeable difference is that there are no buttons built into the side here. Again, it's just smooth glass. There's nothing to interrupt the flow of your brush or your pen as you're drawing. All the express keys are now on the remote. So I will sit down and draw a little quick demo drawing on here just to give you an idea of how this works from an artistic standpoint rather than just doing some little scribbles. But before I do that, I do want to talk a little bit about where to buy these Cintiqs. You can buy these online. If you want to buy them from Wacom.com, you can do that. Or you can get them on Amazon. You can take a look down in the description below for some links to these on Amazon. I also have a whole list of tablets available on my website and my web store for digital art products, aaronrutten.com products. So here I am doing a quick drawing in Corel Painter 2017. I'm just going to doodle the face here, just make up something from my imagination and just show you how easy it is to draw on something like this. It feels very natural if you come from a traditional drawing experience like I do. It's nice to be able to put your pen to your canvas and get that line to appear at the tip of your pen compared to some of the other tablets that don't have a screen where you have to look up at a separate screen and that disconnect can feel a little strange. So this is really nice. It's kind of the luxury tablet. So there you go, that was a quick review of the Wacom Cintiq 27 QHD Touch. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I have a lot more digital art product reviews like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.